decided that the easiest way for us to have roosters ready for butchering or slaughter and butchering on the homestead is to go into the coop the night before and put them in a large dog cage in the covered side of the chicken coop. That way when we come out in the morning they're already in a smaller area and it makes it easier for us to transfer them to the smaller dog cage um, to bring them to the processing area. The reason we like to do it the night before is it's a lot easier to catch the chickens. There's a lot less struggle and a lot um, less resistance and fight from them if you do that at night whenever they're not as mobile. If you try to do it in the morning, your chicken wrangling and we prefer not to do that if we don't have to especially since when we're catching them um, that way we're about to process them and like I said you want them to be as calm as possible so that it doesn't flavor your meat in a way that you really don't want so this way they are more calm by the time you're ready to do the processing except when a hen pecks at it <laughs> say tiki tiki brat Good job, Malachi. Wait, yeah, you gave them fish treats. Um, It helps calm them down to be upside down and tucked in tight like that. Give them just a little bit to be like that and then we'll proceed. You want them to be calm because you don't want the meat tainted with a lot of adrenaline. It'll actually make the meat taste different. Now the method I use, I will put a link in the description below. Um, I felt it was the best for me as a woman because I don't have a lot of upper body strength to be able to use this particular method. I won't show it in this video, but you can check out that link, like I said, in the description. We try to do it um, the way it's the least painful for the chicken. Now, I have been told that um, if you allow the animal to drain out before totally decapitating, it helps flush or pump out all the blood because the heart is still beating. We may eventually go to that, but right now our method is to completely decapitate so that I know for sure the animal is not suffering any pain.
We will let the blood drain out and we will let the nerves calm down, let the synapses stop firing so he's not jerking around, and then we'll scald him to remove the feathers while still keeping the skin on the carcass. And to get our scald water ready, we take boiling pots of water <laughs> and we pour them into In our- In the pot, not on you. Wait, say that again? In the pot, not on you. <laughs> yes. Now this is our first time to do this without having it over an open flame. And we've liked it, but it has been a challenge to get the boiling water from the kitchen back here to the backyard into the scalding pot quickly enough before it um, actually cools off too much. But it's still less hassle than trying to deal with an open fire that has a mind of its own. <laughs> this has been easier for temperature monitoring. Okay, so once it stops stripping and it's no longer jerking around because the nerves have uh, ceased, the synapses have stopped firing, it's time to um, put this in the scalding pot. Now we're going to test the temperature because we prefer ours around 147, although we have gotten it around 150. And as long as it's within that range, like five above or five below 147, um, we've had a lot of success with it. If you get it too much higher, it cooks the chicken. It starts the cooking process and the skin is more likely to rip off. And the whole point of plucking a chicken is to keep the skin because the skin makes chicken taste better. If you don't want to go through this process and you don't care about the skin, you can actually just skin the chicken like you would a rabbit. Check the description below if you want to see our butchering of our rabbit here on the homestead. All right, so we're about 152 or 153. And I'm good with that. It's going to cool off. It's a cool day. Um, and it usually takes a couple of minutes for the uh, bird to be in there to scald. And you just drop it in. You don't have to wash it off first. Um, it's hot enough that any kind of dirt and debris that may be on the bird, um, the microbes should get cooked. Um, and you're just going to take some sort of stick or you could even take a bowl um, and take the bowl upright and just push it down, you're wanting to push the bird below the surface. And you're going to want to kind of move their bird around a little bit in the water. Some people add a soap like Dr. Bronner's soap um, to help, basically to help the feathers loosen from the pores. We've never found it necessary um, we just do the feather pull testing method to let us know if it's been in the water long enough. And the water will get dirty, as you can see. And you can do multiple birds in the same batch of water. Now this one was the first bird in this batch, but the two that I did this morning, um, I just reused the water. It doesn't hurt, hurt anything because, again, of the temperature. Excuse me. It's killing off anything that might affect your meat um, and you're going to be rinsing off the bird later anyway after you uh, finish the processing. And if you're wondering what that weird thing is sticking up, that's the neck. The skin on the neck is fairly loose Oops. and so um, it pulls down and then all you see is the neck meat. And some people don't use it, but we keep it for um, bone broth. It works really well for that. So it's been a couple of minutes, and I'm just going to um, pull the bird up. Now there's a couple of things. You can do the feather test where you pull, and the tail feathers are actually some of the hardest, and those came out very easily. Okay, now the wing, it took a little bit more effort. Let me try one more time. Okay, those were a lot better. All right, those right there, still a little bit tough to pull, so I'm going to stick it back in the water. The other test you can do is to see if the skin on the legs and feet is ready to come off. 
usually you can start here oh see I just pushed with my thumb and pulled with my forefinger and it came off nicely so that parts ready so really we're just waiting for those wing feathers to um, loosen on up now some people will actually use the feet to dunk the bird into the water and just hold it submerged that way and that would be easier the only reason we don't do that is we like to keep the feet for our bone broth because that's some good collagen um, has a lot of health benefits and you can look that up online as to the reasons if you're wanting to save the feet for bone broth you need them submerged below the surface so that that skin um, will detach easily enough because you don't want that scaliness in your bone broth just the feet themselves all right so i'm going to call that good and now I'm going to pull the bird out by the feet. And I'm going to bring it over our bucket that we're using to catch our feathers and um, what we used under the birds after we did the dispatching. And that's going to go in our compost or even directly on our garden. Only because it's the fall and we aren't, well, fall slash winter is what it feels like for Texas. Um, and we won't be planting anything in there until the spring so there'll be plenty of time for this to mellow um, before anything gets planted if it were middle of summer or even the spring this would definitely want to be put in a compost pit not directly where you're about to plant vegetables and such and you're just going to try to quickly pull out feathers it's a messy job but it's part of what has to be done um, if you can, if you have the bird upside down and you can pull up, that works best because it removes the uh, little, I don't know what you call them. They, I thought they were pin feathers, but I think pin feathers are actually the smaller, teeny tiny hairs that are on the bird. Um, which is why the pluckers are nice because you can remove most of those with a plucker. We don't have a plucker yet, so we do it by hand. And you want to do it quick because the longer it takes between the time that you have dispatched the bird and when you can uh, get it eviscerated, the better because rigor mortis will set in. So I don't know if you saw what I was doing, but first I'm taking off the skin, off the legs. And then if you heard that little snap, basically there is a cover on the nails, both for roosters and for hens. Sorry, let me get another one and we can do a close-up. And it's just like a little cap to the nail. And you want to pull those off if you're going to be using the feet for bone broth. If you're not, or if you don't have another use for the feet, if you're going to give them to the dogs or just put them in your compost pit or bury them um, and then plant something over it, don't mess with wasting your time on peeling the scales off the feet or the caps off the toenails. It's just if you're wanting to further use the feet for your own consumption. Okay, so now I'm going to finish getting the feathers off. And then we will go to the processing where we actually eviscerate. So I want to show you what I was talking about with the direction of pulling. If you pull down, you might not, well, it might not come out quite that easily. So if you can, try to pull up, if you've got the bird upside down, in the direction that essentially the feather was growing. And you may still have some of these left under the skin. You can kind of use your fingernail gently if you want to push it up, but really we don't mess with it too much. Um, again, a plucker might help with that, but um, we don't worry about getting it 100% perfect while we're doing the butchering portion outside. Um, when we go in to clean it up a little more, then we might go ahead and uh, do a little bit more cleaning with it. So. Now we've got the bird on the table. Now, one of the birds that I did this morning, we actually stuck in the crock pot right after I took it inside and got it cleaned up. Um, 
this one is going to be frozen and so um, I'm just going to prepare it for that. Now you can leave the skin on the neck. I am getting to the point where I prefer to take the skin off the neck um, just to make it easier for me to see what I'm looking at because I've cut through the crop several times. So I cut all the way around on that skin and then I used my finger to, to poke a hole essentially through the connective tissue from one side of the neck to the other end of the neck. And then I'm going to take my knife, slide it through that hole and just cut up. And that way I can remove that neck skin, supposedly and save that skin and that will go in a bone broth for us okay and i have a bowl of water here this is especially important in the summer especially here in texas one um because of the temperature i will have ice in there and it just helps cool things down you can also use a cooler with ice water in it um, but since it's a cold day and we're just doing this one, I'm not having to worry about it being in inappropriate temperatures for a long period of time. This top bowl is to cover it. Now again, because we're already past summer, we're in winter weather, um, I don't have to worry about it. But in the summer, flies would be all over the place. And so it's good to have that cover to cover up whatever um, meat you're setting aside. Okay. So again, without having the neck skin, it makes it easier to see. Here's the neck with the spine and the meat. Here's connective tissue, which I wanna put my finger through. This is the esophagus, and this bag right here, right here, is the crop. Now, because we set our chickens in the cage the night before, and we, don't let them go out to eat before we uh before we do the butchering that crop is basically a flimsy bag now having said that two of the roosters i butchered earlier today were in that little cage for a little bit before i actually started the processing and they ate some of the grass that the cage was sitting on so that crop actually had undigested pieces of grass inside it but this rooster was still in the, um, the coop, and so he didn't have anything in here. If you're not familiar, the crop is the area where a chicken will store food that it's eaten until it has time to send it to its stomach-like organ. And we'll show you that later, and that's the gizzard. But now we're going to take that crop and kind of work our fingers around it to remove that connective tissue from the skin. Alright, and the purpose for that is to be able to um, hopefully pull it through with the rest of the guts, <laughs> with the rest of the innards when we actually open the bird up. So now I'm just going to um, cut the neck here towards the top. I'm not very good at this. I, I usually hit bone pretty bad. Um, and I use a breaking method to help me with the joints so that I don't dull all my knives really, really bad. And I probably, I went lower than I usually do. And my board sliding. So just going to remove that neck. And I'm trying not to tear up my skin too much because, again, chicken skin is part of what gives good flavor. And so um, I want to save as much of it as I can. And once I've broken through the joint on the spine, I can kind of bend and twist. And there's the neck. And that is really good for bone broth. And you can use the meat from that to shred if you so choose. Now, here on the back is an oil gland and um, it's best to try to cut it off. I am still trying to figure out the best way to do that. I've never been fully pleased with it. Um, you have to be careful because there is the spine there right underneath it as you can see right there. 
but you want to remove that gland you don't want to forget and then have it in your crock pot that wouldn't be quite so much fun and now I'm going to do the quick method if you're squeamish you might want to fast forward for a few seconds because again I use the breaking method just to save my knives and so I get here at the joint and I just bend a little bit so I can see where I need to make my first cut and I just go a little bit gently and I'm bending as I go so that that joint that bone um, well the bones will separate at that joint and then I put my knife in between and cut through the cartilage and the tendons so that again I'm not um, cutting my knife on the bone and plus if you don't cut on the bone you have this really nice curve that won't poke through your bags whenever you're packaging your meat so just a quick little piece and see here you can already see the rounded bones so I'm going to continue to bend and then I'm going to stick my knife under and again being gentle because there's still this bone on this side that my knife is touching if it's touching it too much I'll just go on the sides and cut through some of that and that allows me to separate those two pieces and then I can cut through theoretically I can cut through Woo! There we go. Looks like I did cut through a little bit of bone there, but that's the idea. Alrighty. And now um, you can go ahead and get the guts if you want the whole chicken. And I think I'll try to do that because I think most people like to keep it that way. I usually cheat um, and remove the leg and the thighs. Let's see. But again, because most people probably will want to keep them. Um, so what I did, there's the breastbone here, and I'm cutting right underneath, but I'm trying not to cut too deep because then um, you, you run the risk of poking through some guts. So, and the main gut that's of concern is the, um, the intestines because you don't want poop going everywhere. So once you've got it open a little bit, you can actually take your hands, put your hand under the breastbone and above the vent, which is the poo-poo spot, and you just pull. And that opens the cavity up. All right, this right here is the bird's stomach. The yellow, I believe, is um, some fat. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my hand in and I'm going to scrape and roll my hand along the sides, the insides of the chest cavity. And I'm going to do my fingers kind of like this along the edge with the back of my fingers along the edge of that cavity. And I'm removing that connective tissue that connects the organs to the inside of the bird. All right. And once I have most of it removed as far as I can feel, then I'm going to put my hands around it and then pull. And looks like I did get the esophagus. Yay! And there is that crop. So this part right here is what we were seeing at the neck. And the crop attaches to the gizzard because it goes to the stomach. And then the gizzard attaches to the um, the guts. The, the What am I trying to say? The intestines. Thank you, Justin. Okay. And so now I'm going to cut some of the skin here on the edge to get down to this spot um, near the vent because I'm needing to pull out the intestines. There is some connective, oh well actually that may be meat. Every chicken can be a little bit different. So another way you can help to see things a little bit better, although your bird may not be as pretty for display, is to cut the skin and some of that connective tissue right on the underside of the ribs. And that's helpful um, if you're still learning how to do the butchering process because it just helps open it up a little bit. So again, I've pulled 
on the intestines and the other innards. There's still a few connections, but for the most part, I've gotten the majority of it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to set it to the side and I'm going to cut around trying not to poke into the intestines themselves. Okay, because what we want to do, we're essentially going to make a cut between these two pelvic bones, make a cut down underneath the vent and then back up without puncturing the intestines. And I'm not going to guarantee that I won't because so far I've had a 50-50 success rate today. Okay, so putting my fingers between where I'm cutting and the organs I don't want to cut through. I think my knife is starting to dull a little bit. Okay, so I got a little ways, but I've got some intestines right there. And if you're wondering what this yellow layer here is, that's fat as well. Okay, so I've cut down below to where the below where the vent is. So now I'm going to shift everything to the other side and do the same on the other side. It really would have been easier to see this without the legs in the way. So I apologize. Let me scooch this down. Again, trying not to dull my knife on the bones, but also trying not to cut those organs. Let me use my fingers to go behind to break some of that connective tissue. Okay, now you see I've got my fingers all the way around, so all I have left is to cut this little piece. And now there's essentially the butthole, or the vent, and then the intestines. So now it's just a matter of pulling out the rest of that. So here are essentially the vital organs for the bird. Now the testes are still in there. Um, we'll get those out in a minute. But this is um, what you're going to see whether it's a rooster or a hen. This right here is the heart. It's kind of a triangular shape and it has a little uh, connective tissue covering on it and we will save that because that's a muscle that can be eaten and then we have the liver and so I'm going to break the connective tissue but I want to caution you because there's a, a very important part on the liver that we want to be careful to avoid breaking let me cut some of this fatty connective tissue and let me actually remove the crop I think it'll make it a little bit easier okay and I'm gonna go ahead and well I'll just leave that there for the moment okay so the liver again is this dark brownish red piece and on the liver is the gall sac and the reason you want to be careful is if that gall busts on the liver, um, it will give it a very unpleasant taste. Some people will actually um, not use the liver at all if the gall sac busts. Um, some will just say wash it off quickly. But what you want to do is take this greenish looking um, appendage essentially that's on there Pinch it close if you can, and then pull it away from the liver. And I am of the opinion I would rather tear the liver up a little bit than to get that bile from that gall sac on it. So here is that liver. Looks nice. There aren't spots on it. Looks healthy. So that'll be good eating. I say good eating. I don't like liver, but I'm trying to learn to like the things that are good for me and good for my teeth. So, whoop, 
Well, at least the poop happened after the chicken uh, was far removed from it. So let me clean this up real quick. Okay, so now we're going to cut, now we're going to cut the esophagus off of the crop. Again, sorry. This is the crop. This is the stomach. All right. So we have the gizzard. We can take the ventricle, essentially the spot that we cut the esophagus off, and we're going to slice gently around the edge. Pause it. And we're okay, so we're going to cut around. And the reason we're going to cut shallowly and gently is because inside this is all the stones that the bird has eaten to chew up its food. Chickens don't have teeth, and so they rely on the gizzard to t break up their food. So it's stored in the crop at their neck and chest area until usually nighttime when they send it to the gizzard to eat. So that's grass and you can see in there there's some rocks. Looks like this chicken may have even gotten a piece of glass or a clear rock. I'm not sure. It was well rounded. And if you smell it, it may smell a little fermented and that's because that's the purpose of that particular organ. So we're going to rinse this off real quick. You're okay, Malachi. Okay. And then one final thing we're going to do to this particular organ to process it is we're going to remove this yellow layer. You're okay, sweet boy. It's pliable, but it's stuck pretty tightly to the inner membrane. And our dog Jane likes that part a lot, probably because it's chewy. And once you have that removed, then you've got your muscle. Look at that deep, rich color. And you can cut that up and fry it. I think maybe Deep South Homestead has an episode on him cooking the gizzard. All right, really quick. We've gotten everything out except for the lungs. And then if it's a male, the testes. And what I'm learning is on the testes, they're kind of buried in between um, bones. So with that, I don't know any particular trick. You just dig your finger in and pull it out as best you can. I haven't been able to get it out in one piece. Um, so again, you just do your best. And then with the lungs, you can take your fingers and scrape in between the ribs to remove that. Or some people will even use a spoon. Once you've removed those two things, you can rinse out your bird and um, just give it a good washing that way. And then if you want to pull out or, or pull off anything else, you can do that. And then you can cut up your bird. the video push the thumbs up to like the video also hit that subscribe button also the bell so that you can get notifications when our videos come out check us out on our social media pages too the links are below bye y'all